Hello everybody, Brian Kelson with you again, bringing a second edition to the water baptism Peter in Acts 2.38 and did he actually preach works and faith as opposed to Paul who taught faith only. As you know some take and run with this and say well there you are you see. Peter's gospel wasn't the same as Paul's and consequently they even extend that to say well Paul was preaching the dispensational truths of Ephesians and Colossians because it was faith only and justification thereby through grace. Uh, well justification by faith through grace is not the um, unique stepping stone to the church which is his body as we know Abraham experienced that. Now last video we actually looked at <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 9 who spoke about um, the Levitical offering uh, of the Day of Atonement in Leviticus 16. And the Holy Ghost thus signifying, uh, that is the high priest went in once a year not without blood, which he offered for himself and the errors of the people. Verse uh, 8, the Holy Ghost uh, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, which while as the first tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure for the time then present, which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings or baptisms and carnal ordinances. You know, Hebrews 13 goes on to speak of uh, the heart being established uh, by grace. Remember that one? That's Hebrews 13, be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. And there's plenty of that going on in the Christian community today, isn't there? What are we? We have more denominations than years since Christ our Lord. Now, what I would like to go to right here is um, to pick this up and continue on to um, the fact that we mentioned last time that the heart had to be established by faith. And we jump over to the Apostle Paul and find that in, he says, For with the heart man believes unto the righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And so the Apostle Paul, in that great epistle which focuses on justification by faith through grace, speaks so much about the heart. For the scripture says in verse 11, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And that is out of uh, Isaiah 28. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's critically important at this point to notice that there is no difference in the apostle right here between the Jew and the Greek. Is the God of the, of the circumcision only? No, he's the God of the uncircumcision. The Jew and the Greek, there is no difference. And you know what? When we start when we start saying that Peter taught works and faith, then obviously we're making a difference between the Jews that Peter preached to and the Jews that Paul preached to. Whereas Paul says quite clearly there is no difference. And we're going to find Peter says the same very shortly because both of these men quote Joel chapter 2 verse 32. There is no difference. And it's Joel 2.32, and it shall come to pass that whoever call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Whosoever in Joel, whosoever that calls upon the name of the Lord shall be forgiven. Now, the fascinating thing about Joel um, is that um, Joel speaks about the heart. And I'll have a look at that right here in the same chapter, remember? Verse 12 of Joel chapter 2, which Paul quotes in Romans 10, Therefore also now saith the Lord, turn you even unto me with all your heart, and rend your heart. Verse 13. How many times last video did we look at the prophets which said, Oh really, you know, it, it's got to be the sacrifices. No, it's the heart. Moses cried to the people, Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked. Circumcision? Wow, there was no difference between circumcision and uncircumcision. And we might refer to Galatians here shortly. One of the most fascinating things, of course, 
um, is Stephen in Acts chapter 7 saying, ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do you. Uncircumcised in the heart, which was absolutely most important, wasn't it? Therefore said the Lord, for as much as the people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honour me, but they have removed their heart far from me. Isaiah 29, 13. Isaiah 1, 16, we looked at these. The Lord says, wash you, make yourself clean. Well, I don't think Isaiah is telling people to go and get water baptised for the forgiveness of sins. Do you? And we looked at Jeremiah 4.14 where the prophet said, O Jerusalem, wash your heart from wickedness. Isn't it what's so important, isn't it? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Now, if this be the case and we talk about circumcision, no difference between the circumcision and the uncircumcision, the Jew or the Greek, for it is the same Lord who saves everybody when they call upon him. I was thinking of Romans chapter 2. Now, of course, Romans chapter 2 down at verse 28, the Apostle Paul says this, For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of, what are we talking about right here? Where have we been talking about all the way from Moses through to Hebrews, right back through um you know, Jeremiah, uh, sorry, Joel, back here in Romans 2, Paul is saying he is a Jew which is one inwardly and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is of men but of God. So once again, somehow we've got to argue that Peter is saying water baptism brings forgiveness of sins when Paul is expounding very, very clearly that there is no difference. Now, by the way, Please don't jump onto Romans chapter 2 and start telling me that a Gentile is a Jew because they have faith in Christ and they are a Jew in their heart. That's not what it's talking about because earlier up, Paul said in Romans 2.26, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, we're not talking about the righteousness of God, are we? Uh, shall his uncircumcision be counted or reckoned as circumcision? No, no, Paul's not saying in Romans 2 that all Gentiles that believe are actually Israelites. Uh, one of the famous uh, favourite passages for the Hebrew roots uh, messianic movements, right? Now, it's all about the heart. Circumcision is of the heart. Well, then what is water baptism then? If circumcision is, is the circumcision of the heart and not being uncircumcised in the heart, and this is what's critical, then how can water baptism be critical? By the same extension, so Romans 2, 28, you know, John the Baptist says, which mentions John the Baptist said, and think not to say within yourselves we have Abraham to our father, uh, God's able to use stones for, um, Abraham, uh, to make up children of Abraham. And he said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh unto me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. So John the Baptist said, water a Baptist water baptism was unto repentance, but it pointed to Christ. John 31, he baptized with water to manifest Christ to Israel. Are we beginning to see that Christ is the means whereby forgiveness of sins is made possible? Now I want to go to Acts 15. Okay, now I referenced it last time about um, Peter and his statement, which we'll look at again. But in Acts 15, 1, Certain men came down from Judea and taught the brethren and said, Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. Uh, in verse 5, uh, they were a sect of the Pharisees which believed. Remember that? They believed. Go to Acts 21 at the commotion caused uh, for, for uh, Paul when he returned to Jerusalem with witness. It was the Jews which believed which caused the ruckus. And they said, it is needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And everyone came together to consider this matter. You know, we know that the Apostle Paul did baptise some people and we also know that he circumcised Timothy. Why would Paul circumcise Timothy? Well, they knew uh, that his mother was his Jewish and his father was a Greek. That's Acts 16. Why did Paul do it? Circumcision was the heart, but he circumcised purely for the sake of the unsaved Jews in that community. 
the Philippian jailer was here, do you? I don't know. But Paul must have been there when the Philippian jailer said, in the same chapter, Acts 16, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in my household. And he was baptized. So, you know, we know that these things are external and there's some means whereby they are a witness, particularly to Jewish people. But they are not works accompanying faith for people to be saved, which is exactly what this Acts 15 Council is about. Now, what is critical here is the fact that Peter and his statement. Peter said, <clears throat> You know how that a good while ago, verse 7 of Acts 15, God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God knowing which, and God which knowing the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost even as he did unto us. Could we please see the word heart yet again? Everything that we've looked at is about what is inward. It's about the heart which brings salvation. Peter speaking about the heart. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. How are their hearts purified? Hearts established by grace, Hebrews 13. Hearts purified by faith, Romans 10. The heart believeth unto, you see, it's the heart. Peter, we all know, in his letter, has said, you have not been redeemed with corruptible things from the, by the vain traditions of your father. You know it, but 1 Peter 1, 18, isn't it? But with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb foreordained. What did he say in, in the same letter, chapter 2? Christ bore our sins on the tree, right? Is it, you think this man is preaching that water baptism is essential and faith to be saved when he's writing such things and saying there is no difference between us and them. But as soon as we say, oh, there's got to be a difference, the Jews that Peter preached to had to do works and believe. Well, is Peter saying there was no difference purifying hearts by faith? What? Paul's Jews were different and Peter's Jews were different? Because we want to build up the ideology and the false um, concept that Paul was preaching the dispensational truths of Ephesians and Colossians in the Act period because it was faith only in Paul and it was works and faith in Peter. It's not works and faith in Peter. This is a fascinating verse, Acts 15.10. Now therefore why tempt ye God in the matter of making the Gentiles be circumcised and obey the law? to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples which neither our fathers nor we are able to bear. Remember, in Leviticus when the high priest went in, he had to wash himself, but if he didn't go in without the blood, he could wash himself a million times and he'd be dead. And it wasn't the priest's washing that took away the sins, it was the scapegoat. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved even as they... Do you know Peter is constantly putting the Jews first? He said no difference between us Jews and them Gentiles. He said we believe through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we Jews shall be saved even as they. And also when he spoke um, at the uh, in Acts 11 I think he said even as it fell on them even at us at the beginning Jew first. So Peter is believing through, through the grace of the Lord Jesus, we shall be saved. Not once does anyone here say that circumcision was essential and the keeping of the law was not essential, but of course they gave them four things out of the law to believe, to, to observe as believers. Because Paul in Acts 21 observed the law. Why? Because the law was a shadow of good things to come in the Acts period. It looked to the great hope of Israel. And the four things for these Gentiles to observe would have somehow been application, a compromise, a position where the Jewish believers who were faithful and kept the law were not totally offended by the Gentiles who dwelt among them predominantly during the Acts period. Acts 15. Now, 
We've seen, we've referenced Peter and what he wrote about. And we know that Paul um, did um, baptize and circumcise somebody. But I want you to listen to Peter and I want you to listen to this. For I delivered unto you, first of all, which I also received, how Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. Now that's Peter. And that's Peter's gospel, by the way, in his letters, the death, burial and resurrection of Christ, also seen in Leviticus 16, the death of the um, goat and the life and bearing of sins of the other one. Uh, Paul says that last of all he was seen of me also as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles. By the grace of God I am what I am. And in verse 11 of 1 Corinthians 15 he says, Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach and so you believe. So we preach what, Paul? Where's water baptism? He's saying the death, burial and resurrection of Christ according to the scriptures is what everyone preached. And whether Peter preached or James preached or whoever else preached, they believed. That is the gospel. That is what was being preached. Now, do we have to go back to Peter speaking to Cornelius? Peter says, what does Peter preach? He preaches, he preaches Christ's death, burial and resurrection, doesn't he? And he says to Cornelius, And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. But God raised him up the third day and showed him openly. Death, burial and resurrection of Christ. Not to all people under us, but uh, witnesses chosen by God. Commanded us to preach to the people, verse 42. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall have remission or forgiveness of sins. Peter is preaching to Cornelius the death, burial, resurrection of Christ and Christ is the one through whom forgiveness of sins comes. That is 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Right here in Peter. Peter's gospel was works and faith. Now, Acts 4 and 9, Peter's standing before the council. He speaks about the death, burial and resurrection of Christ. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, Psalm 118, 22 and Isaiah 28. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. He's speaking to Jews and he's saying salvation is in this one. I don't see water baptism being part of that. There's nothing they could say to that. Now, in Acts chapter 3, Peter says to the lame man, In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And Peter goes down and he says to people, <clears throat> In verse 13, The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his Son, whom you delivered up and denied him. But you denied a murderer and killed the Prince of Life, and he was raised from the dead. Death, burial and resurrection of Christ. But he says, This man was made whole by the faith in Christ. He said, <clears throat> in his name, through faith in his name, verse 16, I skipped over it, that's why I had to go back and find it. In his name hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. The lame man was healed, not by Peter, but by faith, by Christ. So do you think Peter, who has been preaching Christ's death, burial and resurrection and Christ as the one who could bear sins and bring forgiveness of sins, has begun his ministry in Acts chapter 2 by saying water baptism was essential because it was water baptism that brought forgiveness of sins? No, I think if we remember John the Baptist, the baptism was unto repentance and was pointed to Christ. Let's go back to Acts chapter 2. 21. 
And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. As Peter quotes Joel chapter 2, which said, remember, rend your heart and not your garments. Then Peter talks about the death, burial and resurrection of Christ. And he says down there in verse 38, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. The name of Jesus Christ is the one that brings remission of sins. If we would read this in another version, which probably would horrify some people, but I want you to listen to this. Then Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ to remission of sins. Yes, it was a water baptism and it was a baptism of repentance. Exactly the same as John the Baptist, except this side, it's on this side of the cross. John the Baptist pointed to Christ and Peter is pointing to the same one, in whom is forgiveness of sins. With all this before us, all about the heart and all about the prophets and all about the quoting of the prophets, can we really say that Peter taught works and faith? I don't think Acts 2.38 is the basis of that ideology at all. And I ask you to just think, if you're a mid ex person and someone has built a whole, um, a whole structure on the fact that Peter taught works and faith because of water baptism, then I think maybe it's time to reconsider that Peter taught faith, that Paul taught faith, that circumcision was of the heart, that everything that Israel knew from the prophets was it was the heart that the external things were only a schoolmaster, as Galatians 3 said, to bring them to Christ and faith in Christ. Paul understood it because Christ taught him. And Peter understood it because Christ taught Peter as well and had his mind open to understand the scriptures. So whatever Paul wrote about in the New Testament, Peter understood. That's why in Galatians chapter 2, when Paul went to the leadership in Jerusalem, they gave him the right hand of fellowship because Paul went to the Jews among the Gentiles, Acts 21, and Peter went to the Jews. And what did they preach? Christ crucified, Christ buried, Christ raised, in Christ put faith from the heart, forgiveness of sins. There is no work and faith and faith. There is no basis of any difference. It was difference of direction. And all of those believers at that time were empowered by the promise of the Holy Spirit, which was upon those who from the heart had believed into Christ.